The Digital Scene Show is sponsored by Light Panels, makers of the world-renowned Emmy Award-winning green-friendly LED lighting systems. Check them out at lightpanels.com. Dave, welcome to the Digital Scene Show here at Adobe Max 2009. Thanks. Now, behind you, you've got uh, one heck of a good-looking car. Absolutely. It's the Tesla, right? It's the Tesla Roadster. And you're with uh, Round Arch? Correct. And uh, you guys, what, what are you doing with Tesla? Did they just give you this for free to drive or what? No, so that we're partnered with Tesla. Okay. Um, we are traditionally a you know digital agency that does a lot of wide-ranging projects from enterprise software to things like the touch panels within the Model S. So we're working with Tesla who can clearly design one heck of a vehicle. Yes, they can. Um, but they don't necessarily have a background in software design uh, we, where we do. And so there's a nice marriage of us consulting with them, helping them define what that experience, the next generation experience for the, the within vehicle sure. kind of command and control looks like. So tell us, what does that look like in the future? So, um, and I'm assuming that's the near future, not. Yeah, that's you know we're looking a couple years away. Um, the the prototype for the Model S, Tesla Model S, it's a family sedan, um, is going to be a very groundbreaking, industry-setting vehicle. Um, part of that is removing all of the knobs and gauges and things that you would see in a car now. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look at a lot of the new cars coming out, there's a lot of, you know buttons and switches and dials. Sure. Um, the inside of the Tesla Model S is a very flat, very smooth, very compelling interior. All of those gauges and controls for everything from the heating and ventilating and air conditioning system to radio to navigation, um, and also things like voice to speech and speech to text and all of these technologies that you would think about with the web yeah. um, migrating we'll in in, into the car. So, so it's all gonna be kind of like virtual, basically. It'll be a... a the, the dashboard console will be a web connected experience. So think of now, this. Now, when you say web connected, you're talking about like literally web connected, literally meaning they're. Connected. They'll be all the time on 3G connection to the car. Think of oh, the wow. car as literally a very complicated, large scale mobile device that is. It's a big iPhone. Exactly. <laughs> right, right. That's, that's really cool. That's yeah. Actually, that's really cool. And that's on their next new model that's coming out? That will be the 2012 Model S sedan. Now, what kind of technologies are you guys using for that? I mean, is Flash powering some of that stuff? So, or? sure. So, um, one of the benefits that we found with the Adobe suite of products, from using Illustrator to come up with an initial sketch, to using Adobe Air as a, as a runtime for the prototype, that workflow um, that Adobe has created within those products has really helped our process out, and that's why we chose that platform. Um, the benefits here are you're not designing a car that goes from the 2008 model to the 2009 model. What you're doing is, is you're starting with the 2012 model from right, scratch. Right. And part of that, um, we're not involved in the industrial design or the design of the vehicle itself, but we're helping with the prototyping and understanding what that experience of those screens look within the car. Um, taking from everything that we've done around rich internet application development and sort of next generation web connected desktop software, um, we know that the Adobe stuff allows us to rapidly prototype things. And so Franz von Hausholzen, who's the lead designer at Tesla, has a vision. And we're helping him kind of realize what pieces of his vision will work for consumers, what pieces um, need to be refactored a bit. And so sure. we're going through some really interesting design exercises where we come up with concepts and are able to get them from a sketch into a visual design into a clickable prototype. So we're saying from visible to clickable in just a matter of either hours or days where in traditional vehicle development you're looking at could be a week long or a month long or two month long process. So it's Because you're using those for prototypes. So now you haven't finalized the technology that, that will go into the car I'm assuming. Correct. And right. that is an on Ongoing constant sure. effort, but you don't know what's going to happen four years from now. Absolutely, and we, we do are working closely with Adobe's engineering team to kind of understand what that roadmap for the Flash platform sure. looks like. And um, you know, there's the QNX folks who have an infotainment system, and they're already using Flash Lite within their system. Right. So it seems as if companies that are making uh, firmware or what would be traditionally firmware-based devices or hardware that has screens on it are really looking towards Adobe for the advantages that their suite of tools gives to maybe become the actual client runtime. But it, so how big, I'm sorry, I didn't mean yeah, to interrupt yeah, you, sure. but how big of a market is, because if you think about it, we, I was joking about being a big iPhone, but really developing 
ex user experiences for the car. It's like developing user experiences for the mobile phone Absolutely. because people are mobile. They're moving. They're doing yeah. something, right? Either driving or working out or whatever, but you're doing something. So how big of a market is that in the future for a, a developer, whether it be Flash or iPhone or it doesn't sure, matter who? Sure. How big of a market is the, the, mo the mobile experience in a car? Is that something that's going to explode? I absolutely I believe so. I mean, if you look at the car market itself and how many vehicles are sold every year and what's sure. happening right now, things are becoming much more digital. Um, part of the concept is ultimately to not only continue with this, I mean, this is a, a, a green company, right? The manufacturing process of the car is very focused on the environment. Um, being able to digitize a lot of the paper process around owning a car and sub vehicle support records and all of that's maintenance records across time. Why can't those just live digitally and live within my dashboard and allow right. me to print them out? But Sure. Right? There's no need for all that paper use. That's right. Um, there's a concept that we have around creating an API that would be sandboxed off from critical vehicle control things like heating and air conditioning and radio control, but to allow companies like Pandora or you know third parties to build applications that could snap into that dashboard through partnerships and, and potentially even... you know. So basically uh, an API to the car that the application could ultimately, with permission of the user, can control. Well, and not necessarily all the functionality of the car, but the, the use of that display panel. So a great example, and this is pie in the sky kind of thinking, but let's say we're going to take a road trip to the Indy 500. Sure. And and we want some information about the Indy 500 before we get there. Right. And I don't want to rely on paper. I want to have an Indy 500 type of application that might run in my car that gives me bus places to park and can direct me to concession stands and you know highlights of the race and what the trial scores were and, and anything related to sort of, it's about great application design puts things into context for sure. people. And if right. you could write applications that use the GPS and your speed and location and sort of the, the experience of sitting in your car. One last question for, for developers that want to set themselves up for the future. Sure. You, you're in the business, you're working on stuff, what should they concentrate on? What's, is, it mo is a mobile device development and design yeah. the thing of the future pretty much? Well, so I think that you know we're, there's a couple things. It's, it's optimizing your applications for these new mobile processors. Sure. And Adobe's really making a big push there, as is Microsoft and other companies. Right. Um, thinking about, I think, the future, there's one interesting component that we haven't been talking about. It's we spent the last 10 years perfecting the web, and now we're looking at how do we take that web technology and integrate it into all these other devices and things like a car. Um, so there's this concept of a hardware-aware and hardware-connected, but yet served off the cloud type of application. Sure. So one of the technologies that we're using um, was pioneered by Adam Flater, who's one of our, is, is Round Arch's evan technical evangelist, one of our engineers, and myself, um, which is called Merapi, which is a bridge for messaging between different software technologies. So for example, in the prototype that we have, we're able to send messages over Adobe's AMF protocol um, from the, the computer hardware and service layer, right, to the interface and back that control everything from web service calls to get maps, uh, all the way down to speedometer information and battery levels and things of that nature. I so see. looking at new technologies and, and really kind of pushing the envelope a little bit that the web doesn't necessarily now need to be constrained into the browser. We've through social networks and through other means, we've been publishing all of this information. Now, I think the challenge to the developers is how do we use that information sure. cross device? So it's not about me sitting in front of my laptop, it's about me having access to information and that information follows me. And in context, because that's, context that's the key to mobility, right? It's absolutely, in absolutely. Excellent, good to meet you, thank you so much. Thanks a lot, appreciate it.